When I was a child, father would prompt guests to describe Camorra in a few words. Locution was the sign of a sharp wit. Over time, common phrases and idioms would arise. Camorra is cruel, torment, suffering. Some guests would attempt to be more poetic in their manners of expression. For example, one might say, Camorra is a carbolite, meaning a place full of backstabbing killers. Another might say, Camorra is a hecatari, a witch, meaning the city performs and is itself an act of outlandish violence. Lately, I've been asking myself the same question. What is Camorra? What word best describes it and my place in it? What are they going to do to us? The Maya of the Immortal Emperor for his sacrifice to mankind. Exalt the Immortal Emperor for his strict guidance. Hey, just hold it together. It's, it's going to be fine. We'll get, we'll get us out of here. The chattel are restless. Monkeys have an intuition for sensing the worst possible outcomes, don't they? Unquestionably. Have you counted them? A cursory glance. Two hundred? Thereabouts. You did well. Shaviste will be pleased. As the human captives walk barefoot through the queues, I can see their bodies covered in a film of sweat. They bump against each other, scared and panicked as they are crammed through the fences. O oh, Emperor, hear us, O oh Lord, for thou art our God. O oh, Emperor, hear us, O oh Lord. Is that a look of empathy behind your black eyes, brother? A scarce loathing. Monkeys are not people, they're prey. Hmm. Proper to be resignified to our whims. <laughs> our whims or others. Gaze down on them, my Zenzen, not in words. Your self pity is revolting. To both of us, the dark city shares a definition a ruinous eloquence. What is Komora? Hmm. Perhaps the best answer is Komora is a prison. I heard Shavista has already sold most of them off. And that was swift. Her good fortunes continue. The first buyer was so proud of the quality, then have their perceptions altered so each second feels like a hundred years. He wanted to keep them around as long as possible. Very expensive procedure. I taste blood in my mouth as my fangs pierce my cheek. Sister and I have grown up in a station far less than what we deserve. How dare our captor reap the spoils for something our family established? Come, my Zenzen. You should make an appearance. Misery loves company. A moment. Do you remember Father's game? Which? Kamora is. Yes. What was his answer? He would say, Kamora is an asylum, a place of protection for our kin. Asylums are also shelters for lunatics. Suppose that's why he said it, hmm? Though gone, one can still feel father's fingerprints in the family keep. 
One could argue he was a better architect than an Arkham. He built turrets and oriel windows, designed wrought iron court halls and vexing terraces. Even the blood lilac floors were patterned by his design. There was a sad intensity to the immense place that reflected its owner. He was building something monumental and impossible. Explorations of infinity, reflection, symmetry. Paths that all, in the end, led to nowhere. A home for dead ends. A toast to the illustrious, incompatible, dread Archon Chavis Day! To Archon, Archon Chavis, Chavis Day! Day. <laughs> <laughs> Mighty the subject of tribute stands at the center of the hall, surrounded by her adoring warriors. Congratulations, my lady. Well done, Dark Chavis lady. Day. When will the next raid be? They swoon for her fine, straight nose and white-fanged smile. The delicacy of her features are heightened by her long black hair. Chaviste, the usurper. Kimura is cruel. It is torment. It is suffering. It is also a strong teacher. It has bent us, but in some cases into more attractive shapes. <laughs> <laughs> the Hellcat stole his halls. She dares to steal his words. Mm -hmm. And what shapes we have. We are beauty befouled, aren't we? Private, passionate. Turbulent things meant not for their own sake, but for the joy of being profane. Komora is a teacher, and we are its students. You've exercised your knowledge today, you chiefs of suffering. You've raised and reaved and raped and ruined, and I am very, very proud. While moments in real space are fleeting when we bring our prey home, <sighs> well, this is time well spent. <laughs> A leather-bound prey dangles from a chandelier made from the bones of its kin. Blood pools through the mouth of its body mask as carbolites surround it, prepared to tap it like an alcoholic reservoir. Fear and hope occupy only moments, but pleasure and pain share a life. A toast. <laughs> Show your host some love, monkey. <laughs> They'll feed well and live long from the souls of this hunt. Oh, this one tastes exquisite. Please, next time leave some for the rest of us. <laughs> there was much beautiful wonton you have to agree. Ah, my twin engines of destruction. Did I hear correctly that an Astartes fell, too? Yes, Matron Arkan. Shaviste glides her palm along Sister's face as she always does, grooming her like a pet. I loathe Sister in these moments. In the Eon's captive, she wooed the usurper and assumed a role in her treacherous cabal. Oh, pity. It would have been a joy to bring a beast home. They can endure such horrors. Terribly difficult things to kill. Aye, Zenzen. Your attitude and impropriety worsen every time I see you. You did not accompany your sister on this raid. Why not? 
I had another engagement. Which was what, exactly? Brooding? Trezebel and I offer each other passing glances of annoyance. I am certain we will feud about this later. Go indulge, both of you. You have earned it. How much longer will you do this? Do what? You've stopped going on raids, except when threatened. Not once has your brooding accomplished anything beyond Chaviste's annoyance. She is our jailer. Why should I labor to make her content? Because I share the responsibility of your miserable obstinance. You would rather I go along quietly? <sighs> if you wish to satiate that acid and rage in your heart, do it elsewhere. Torture thralls, suffocate jarrings, take up your own addictions. Just do not drag me into your escapist fantasy. Fantasy? I am in hell, unlike you. Trezebel, the complicit hostage. <laughs> I have not settled, Isenzen. I have distracted myself with the circumstances. Not all of it is devastating. There is joy in torture and raiding. Would you rather Chaveste break her spine? She needs us alive, not unbroken. <laughs> so you say. Chaveste has ordered another raid. You will be there, even if I drag you myself. <laughs> What's the target? A very special monkey, apparently. I leave to the lower chambers, and once again watch as the chattel are corralled. Their heads are kept in wire boxes that restrict their vision and cage their mouths. It avoids any fatalities from them biting each other as an act of mercy killing. I take a deep breath in, and suckle on the air of suffering. After the cages, they will be tagged and given a coding brand. The majority of them, one brands, will be sold as pain stock. Two brands used as indentured combatants in the arenas. Three brands, pristine meat for experiments by the covetous homunculi. Four brands, the finest quality, become studs and heads for wicked indulgences. They are taken to the breeding center where they are forcibly mounted onto the limbless bodies of their cousins. An endless supply of slaves born in captivity. The dark city is violent, but there is no fate more cruel than being born into- Stop that one! It's escaping! I will not go! The Emperor is my shepherd! A forebrand has escaped their shackles. Their gaze is mad, impossibly focused. <laughs> they actually think they can escape. The Emperor protects! You cannot touch me! The rebellious thing is pinned down as Carbolites slam glaives into their back. Each stab lets out a pressurized burst, pulling out chunks of meat. The monkey collapses, mouth gasping in wordless pain. <laughs> <laughs> what in Cain's gate is going on? A waste. A shape abruptly appears beside me. Its back stiffens. Its body and bones crack, filling out the balcony to reveal a monstrously large physique. <sighs> Did you speak? Should you not be attending the Wench Arkans Jubilee? Hmm. Your melancholy reeks. <laughs> what you smell is ambition. Here I stand, just considering my city. I 
Am I Zenzen? Yes. I know you. Ah, do you? What have you heard? The son of Ryzen Serith. Two children, servants to a half-born Archon. Hmm. You heard correctly. I came here once. This keep was dauntless and sagacious. It did not need dancers or entertainers. <sighs> Father would have abhorred what had become of this place. He would not have blemished this keep by flaunting trophies. He purged and crippled, but never bragged. Your father asked me a question. What is Komora? What did you tell him? Camera is a grudge. Do you desire to rule? <laughs> what an ignorant question! It is in my blood. I am destined for it. I am steeped in legacy. Yes, I would see those times returned. I offer my condolences and my services. Without any explanation or flourish, the monster leaves a vial on the railing. It is a small thing sparsely filled with a clear fluid that glints in the ivory light. The container is akin to those used to brew nerve toxins and liquid fury. What is this? Three doses. Undetectable. The last one ending in death. Why? Trueborn should not be treated this way. They are worthy of amenities. The monster disappears back into the shadows of the keep, and I am left with its gift. I return to my quarters with the boon, as Chaviste's bacchanalia begins. Throughout our once cold and brutal home, Chaviste has covered it in alien skins and honeycombs of trophy skulls. It is a half-breed's ego trying to assert itself. It lacks the patient, murderous dignity of a trueborn keep. Along the way, I pass her outlandish trophies, Dark reptilian hides, watercolors painted with the pus of alien creatures, the venom-barbed tail of a galagansis, the centipede fangs of a gi, each known for their fast-acting toxins. But this... A strange crystalline vial that catches the light like a kerasinad. It is a curious thing. Magic in every sense of the word. Three drops, scentless and invisible. I have been given a charitable gift.
Hi there, Colin here. Thank you so much for listening to this production of Three Chances, Part 1. If this is your first time tuning in, Cold Open Stories produces a wide range of content, including short stories, writing contests, and full cast audio dramas like the one you just heard. On our website, you'll find unofficial stories set in the universe of Warhammer 40,000, where you, the listener, can read, write, and perform. It's a great way to build community and share stories worth telling. Now, all levels of experience are welcomed, and these are fan productions, so whether you're a writer, actor, or a black-hearted Drukari, check us out on coldopenstories.com or on social media for the latest release. Three Chances was written and directed by Colin DeGraff. It included music by Robert Renato Hack, with cover art by Ornieris Terenzi. In the story, you heard the voice talents of Joseph Tweedale, Sala Vakavainen, Sarah McManus, Kaylin Harbert, and Cooper Mortlock. Supporting voices by Hannah Helwig, Rylan Woodrow, Jonathan Bruce Hunt, Josh Portillo, Paul Reimbach, Dante Majors, Kelsey Poppin, Torian Brackett, Stephanie Tobin, and Diana Helen Kennedy. Now one more thing before you go. We're coming up on our three-year anniversary of Cold Open Stories. To continue to grow, we need your help. Make sure to follow coldopenstories.com on social media, share our tales, and tell your friends or hobby shop. Without you, none of this is possible. So please, spread the signal, and we look forward to seeing you again with our next story.